All right, Bobby, we are back with another podcast. Now, look, the fans have been writing. They've been texting. They've been emailing us. All right, all right, all right. We'll do Dazed and Confused. It's <laughs> fine. We'll do it. We'll do it. In the immortal words of David Wooderson, we are doing days of Confused. As you guys know, the point of this podcast is it's Bob and I's Hall of Fame movies. We've got a list of about, what, 125, 130 movies that we love. We added an addendum category of about 30 to 40 comedy movies. I'll be honest, Days and Confused was not in it, but we heard a lot of feedback coming in saying, hey, I want to do Days and Confused. I want to do Days and Confused. Bob, maybe we're wrong. Maybe we're wrong. We revisited the movie. We've got a guest on who I'm going to have you introduce here uh, in a little bit who from day one just seemingly loves this movie and wanted to be a part of it. So Bob, introduce us to Joe Bay. Yeah, it, well, it, well, it is a cult classic, right? That, that I would say that's the genre that sits in. And by definition, a cult classic, everybody doesn't love. But we, we've got, you know, Joe Bay's going to, he's going to mention the guy that he bumped out of that chair. He's feeling really bad about it. But we've got Joe Bay on. He's one of my newer great friends in the city of Atlanta here. He's got an awesome family. He's really, has really uh, taken care of me on some experiences, some golf experiences we've done together. Um, and he is one of those guys of a few. There's a few where I'll just call him when I'm driving and we'll talk 45 minutes about absolutely nothing. Will what I've given you feedback, Mark, is when we go on down a topic and we want to just sit in the nuance and take all the tangents to the nonsense, that's Joe Bay. I mean, we will start talking about things that have nothing to do with why I originally called him. Um, so he's been a great buddy. He's got a great sense of humor. And this was the very first movie he said as he's becoming a fan of the podcast. When are you doing Dazed and Confused? So Joe Bay, good to have you, my man. Great to be here, guys. I appreciate you having me on. I, I am a huge fan of the cat of the podcast, so uh, this is uh, this is like a dream come true. <laughs> so, Joe Bay, before we ask you why this is a Joe Bay Hall of Fame movie, I've got to give you my description, Bob. But when I first met Joe Bay, hmm. so East Lake is a really sort of prominent golf course here in the Atlanta area. I mean, every golf course in Atlanta claims ties to Bobby Jones in some way, shape, or form. But there's a lot of Bobby Jones memorabilia in the clubhouse. Most notably, the course hosts the Tour Championship at the end of the year. This is a big event here in Atlanta. So we get an opportunity to go play. It's me, you, it's Coach McCall, who you'll meet in a couple of weeks on this podcast, and Joe Bay. Now we're playing. It's caddies. It's, it's, the, whole, it's the whole deal. Service is, is top notch. Not only are we playing, we are guests of former Atlanta Falcon quarterback Matt Ryan, Matty Ice. We're the guest of Matty Ice. We're having a Shout couple of Shout out Matty Ice. Soda pops, hot dogs, the, the whole deal is on Matty Ice. So we're rounding the back nine. It's a match, mind you. I don't remember who it was, but it's a, you know, it's a, it's a two-on-two -two match. We play the 15th, which is a pretty memorable par three, a tough hole, Island Green. We're walking over to the 16th tee, and Joe Bay's got his bag on his uh, – clubs on his back, and he's walking in. He, he just bailed after 15 holes, said, guys, I got a seven-under hockey game I got to go coach. My kid's playing. I got to go. Now, look, Joe Bay, the dad and me admires the dedication, but we're playing Eastlake in a match coming down to the final three holes, and he just bailed on it. I love the moxie. I love, I love the fatherhood of it. But Joe Bay, tell us why you love Days and Confused and why you were so passionate about doing it on this pod. Well, I, I would like to first apologize to my, my man, Fumalaya, who I, I've never met, but I can already tell a kindred spirit that he, that he really wanted to be on here talking about Days and Confused. So. You know, as Bob alluded to earlier, maybe take a little bit better care of your uh, of your friend Bobby, and uh, and then you get invited on the podcast. Um, no, I, uh, no, Days and Confused is 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 one of my favorite movies, and uh, and we'll obviously get into some of the details of why. But I, I think just overall, I would say that I'm a guy, and I I think you guys are the same. That a, a good movie is not necessarily a movie that's that's well made or that, you know, has big stars or that even necessarily has a plot that is interesting or anything happens. To me, a good movie is a movie that just makes me feel good, that I enjoy watching. Entertainment to me should do one thing and one thing only, entertain. Keep me interested, keep me excited. There is nothing I get more excited about than hearing those first couple 
Uh, I believe it's called a vibra slap, the noise that starts off uh, sweet emotion, the little cranking noise as you see the car pulling. It, it just, it makes me smile. It makes me happy. Uh, you know, I, I, it, maybe it's not objectively a, a great film. It's a film that makes me happier than, than any other movie I've ever seen. And to me, that's, that makes it a Hall of Famer. That um, is a great explanation. I, I don't disagree with the, the music, which I'm sure we'll get into, uh, the feeling that it evokes. Bob, what are your thoughts on the movie? I know it's not in our Hall of Fame, but we, we, we watched it. We enjoyed it. Found some things that I didn't remember that I really liked about it that we're going to get into some of the characters. But just kind of your overall thoughts about Days of Confused. Well, it's it's kind of like when you start debating um, sports or athletes and you say one is better than the other. It doesn't mean the other stinks, right? So just because this wasn't in our top 135 movie doesn't mean the movie stinks. Joby, that was perfect. You're right. Those emotions are exactly what I feel when I watch it. You don't have to turn your brain on. This would be a good, a great movie for Mary Pizzotic. Uh, she does not like to turn her brain on, not ever, but just watching a movie. She just wants to be entertained. Um, I have opinions on the music. There's no doubt. Sweet Emotion uh, is an Aerosmith or unbelievable. But um, my recollection of the movie is it's a it's a high school stoner movie where there's just the reason it wasn't in our top 35. I think there's better examples of that type of movie. So maybe that's maybe that's unfair, um, but it's it's great for one reason uh, or not one reason, but the top reason. And we'll get into it is. Matthew McConaughey is as advertised. If you haven't seen the movie in a while and you're like, oh yeah, he was good in that movie. He is unbelievable in this movie. So for that reason alone, it's a very, very entertaining movie to watch. Yeah, he is. He is exceptional in it. I know it's easy to say after the fact, but you can tell the guy's going to be a star. He was in it way more than I remember. I thought he was just kind of the all right, all right, all right thing, but he's really in it a bunch. Let me give you a little bit of data on the film, released September 24th, 1993, notably directed by Richard Linklater. The cast is chock full of dudes, right? Now, when we get into Hall of Fame plaques, this is not really their their apex by any means, but Jason London, Wiley Wiggins, Ben Affleck, Matt McConaughey, Cole Hauser, a whole host of uh, female actresses that we'll talk about. It's set in 1976 on the last day of class at Lee High School, which is kind of cool, you know, that high school vibe. The mo I did not see this movie in the theater. I'd be interested if you guys had. Apparently, no one else saw this in the theaters either. It only made $8 million at the box office. Now, that doesn't mean a ton. We did Shawshank Redemption last week, which only made $16 million. But there's some reasons for it, I think. It was the number 131 ranked movie of that year. Let me give you some movies, Bob, from 1993 that may have played into that. Maybe you've heard of a few of these. Jurassic Park, The Fugitive, Schindler's List, The Firm, Cliffhanger. A Few Good Men, Groundhog Day, Scent of a Woman, and, and a Bob classic, Cool Runnings. Big mm. year for movies. Maybe one of the biggest Itch. years of all time, probably in a future pod. Uh, but, Bob, you had a point that you wanted to make perhaps on the box office receipts. Yeah, here. one, I don't want to go on the internet because I don't want to mess with the sound. But I, I believe Cool Runnings won Picture of the Year that year, correct? I could be wrong. I'm not sure. Um, interesting enough, when you go to see, when you click on um, Days and Confused and the algorithm says also would like, it said also would like Schindler's List. I didn't really get the correlate. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Obvious. Mark's like, hmm, okay. No. <laughs> That's uh, Days and, Days and Con no, the, it, it is not a also watch Schindler's List, but it was an also watch Breakfast Club. That makes sense. Fear and Loathing in Las, Las Vegas. Super bad. 40-Year-Old Virgin, Boogie Nights, eh, Napoleon Dynamite, Swingers, Animal House. So it is of that kind of mindless vein, not in a negative term, mindless vein. Here's my question. It made $8.2 million in the box, box office. This movie cost $6.9 million to make. I think me, us three could make this movie for 35 bucks and an iPhone right now. What in the hell cost $6.9 million to make? You, you know, you know what it was, and Joe Bay uh, um, talked about it. One of the things he loved about it, it was the soundtrack. They, they spent, I think, over half of the budget. I mean, the soundtrack oh. is nails, right? But they spent a ton of money licensing the movie, and that probably led to why it had a lot of legs. So Linklater made a good call there, uh, spending the money. You're right; it became a cult classic. VHS. Joe Bay, I got a question for you. Initially, Linklater didn't want McConaughey because he was quote too handsome. Have you ever been considered too handsome for anything in your life, Joe Bay? <laughs> 
it's it's one of the most difficult uh, hills I've had to climb in my life. Yeah, it's, it's probably the only reason I'm not in movies. <laughs> That is a good one. Bob, one of our guys, one of our directors, and we're going to have some of his films coming up here shortly, Quentin Tarantino. Mm. I don't know if this is true or not, but he has Days and Confused listed in his top 10 movies of all time. What are your thoughts on the big Q rating well, this thing pretty high? That's, that's, that's a half truth. He did have it, and I, uh, he did have it, but that was in 2002. He had it in his top 10 films of all time, and there's nobody better than Quentin Tarantino. So again, to your point, maybe we're wrong. That's okay. I was wrong once in 2012. I was wrong once in 2015, but it happens. It doesn't happen often. So we might be wrong, but now Quentin Tarantino, incidentally, his in 2022 came out with a new list, his number one movie, good, bad, and the ugly Rio Bravo blowout taxi driver, his girl Friday, five fingers of death, Pandora's Box, Carrie, Unfaithfully Yours, Five Graves of Cairo, and number 11, Jaws. I would be safe to say that we're going to do Jaws. I don't, I mean, I guess we'll do Good, Bad, and the Ugly in our list. I think we have it in there. Um, but I don't know if I'm taking Quentin Tarantino's uh, advice for best movies of all time. That's, that's, that's a rough list. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Right there. We've talked about the cast a little bit. Did you know same casting director as Fast Times at Ridgemont High? Hmm. No. A lot of characters there, kind of some of the same characters, which I'm sure we might get in. We talk about our boy Slater. Did you know Renee Zellweger is an extra, uncredited in the movie? So that not only did they have a great cast, they had they had that. Also, Bob, man, the word man is said 203 times in this movie. Were you keeping track? I know you like to go deep on some of this. No, it's usually more the F word that we keep track. I've got a list that's bookmarked on my internet for F words used in a movie. Do we know where that's ranked? It's got to be Big Lebowski, as I would imagine, is way up there in the word man. Hall of Fame plaque for man in a movie? You're calling it? Big Lebowski? Well, no, that's, no, that's man on fire. Man on fire would be the would be the Hall of Fame plaque for that. Speaking, speaking of man on fire, we'll get to it quick since it's not in our Hall of Fame. I don't assume that this movie is better than man on fire, correct? You would assume correct. No need to spend much time on that one there, Marcus. You got it. I'll give you one more thing before we maybe start jumping into some best scenes and some quotes and things like that. And Joe Bay, since you loved this movie, did you happen to see what the director called the spiritual sequel? Everybody wants some. Did you get on any of that? I did. And, and, you know, as I was kind of doing some research, I heard a lot about that. I don't remember liking it that much. Um, but, you know, I, I guess it's a similar movie. I, I may have to rewatch it. Yeah, it's kind of like late 70s in Texas, like this movie is, but they're in college. Uh, Bob, your guy, Hangman from the movie uh, Top Gun Maverick, Glenn Powell makes an appearance in that That's movie. You're big, uh, Glenn, you buying a lot of stock on Glenn Powell? Buying a lot of stock in Glenn Powell, for sure, but I never saw this movie that you speak of, so I can't, uh, I, well, I, could, I could always lie. You know what? I really liked it. You know, there was a good uh, anti-hero in it. Uh, the, pl the plot twist at the end rivaled Sixth Sense and Usual Suspects. It was a fantastic movie. I think we might do that next week. That it was. Uh, one other thing I'll throw at you guys, which may have led into some of his quotes and performance. He mentions it a little bit on some of the things he thought about. Matthew McConaughey's dad died during filming. So sad to, oh. sad to hear about that. But that's, he says, was kind of the inspiration for the all famous All Right, All Right, All Right. And also the, the live-in, the L-I-V-I-N uh, quotes there. So any other thing you guys want to throw at me that maybe we did not talk about or know about the movie before we jump into our favorite scenes? Joe Bay, anything? Mm -hmm. Not to get too blue on you, but uh, following up on the Matthew McConaughey thing is, is the way that his father died, famously uh, while making love to his mother. <laughs> Wait, is that accurate? Matthew, Matthew, McC McC Matthew, Matthew McConaughey's dad died making love to his mother? <laughs> to his wife. To Matthew McConaughey's mother. <laughs> you know, okay. now yeah. that you, that's great, but now have you seen Zach Galifianakis Between Two Ferns when he interviews Matt McConaughey? He, he does a riff on this. He says, you know, I think Matthew McConaughey says, I want to be uh, more like my dad. And Zach says, so you want to die making love? <laughs> it's, it's pretty good. If you have not seen that Between the Two Ferns, I think you can find him on YouTube with Zach Galifianakis. The Matthew McConaughey one is really good. Also, when he re, uh, when he uh, when he interviews a uh, uh, former first lady, Hillary Clinton, uh, some pretty funny stuff there. So let's pivot into the favorite scene. Now, Joe Bay, we're going to follow, Bob, we're going to follow the same format we did last week with Jay Fresh. 
We'll each pick two. We'll have our honorable mention and our favorite scene is our guest, Joe Bay. We're going to give you the honor to go first. Give us your honorable mention, best scene of one of your favorite movies of all time, Dazed and Confused. Yeah, I mean, every scene is is iconic in my mind, so it's it's hard to choose. But honorable mention, I'm going to go with the uh, uh, what they call the joint subcommittee meeting on the 50 yard line of the football field. Uh, everything about it is is just fantastic, and uh, I should note as we're talking about this, I know this is like known as a stoner movie, and I am about as far from from a stoner, and I, I never have been, and that never was the appeal to me. Um, but just you know the 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 camaraderie of the football guys, the uh, looking back on their lives, thinking about the future, how much football has meant to them. Everything about it is is just fantastic. All the way up to the point where the cops come off and, and Wooderson says something to the cop along the lines of like, are you still mad that I got all district and you didn't? Which I just love. Uh, it's 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 a fantastic scene. It's got some of my favorite quotes. It's uh, it's it's not my favorite, but it's uh, it's a beauty. I've got something here, Mark. Um, so to bring back football glory days, um, Joe Bay is in his high school Hall of Fame. I don't know if you knew that, Mark. Um, Joe Bay, do you want to tell him how you got into the Hall of Fame, or should I, or you want to tell him? Oh well, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of ways. And what do you mean? Did, you don't know if Mark knew that? Of course, Mark knows that. Every, <laughs> everybody knows who is in the Houstonic Valley Regional High School Hall of Fame. Uh, what I don't would you know say the main reason you're in that Hall of Fame. I don't know if it was the one goal that I scored in my three-year high, high school hockey career, uh, my five to forty-seven touchdown to interception ratio that I uh, that I had in football, or possibly the, <laughs> the the incredible donations that I've given to the Hall of Fame for years, including having the Hall of Fame named after my father. You're the best. I'm glad you got there. I didn't want to have to go there. That's uh, that's <laughs> awesome. The other good story about his high school football career, um, I'm, we're playing uh, we're playing Chastain Park Golf Club. If any of you know what Chastain Park Golf is like, it's I'm not a I, I hope I'm not a golf snob. I just love playing golf, but this is by far and away the worst golf course that's ever been created. And shockingly, it's right in one of the most affluent areas of Atlanta. And Joe Bay's got two of his buddies. Do we, do we want to give a shout out to your buddy's golf apparel? What is it again? Oh, geez. T-Box Heroes? T-Box Heroes, yes. T -box -box Heroes. Heroes. So they both played high school football with an, I'm like, yeah, Joe Bay told me like one game he had like six touchdowns. And he looks at me, he goes, we didn't score six touchdowns the entire year. So <laughs> Sorry, sorry, a little offshoot there. Uh, you want me to give my honorable mention, Mark? That's great. I got a comment. You bought your way into your high school Hall of Fame. I mean, that is. We, we still have a state record losing streak. We lost 23 <laughs> straight football games. As with me at quarterback, I think it's still, it's still a record. And this was class S Connecticut football, like, you know, probably the worst football you can find. And we were the worst team in history. You can't write it, Mark. It's so good. It's so just good. a great, great job by you. Oh. Sp speaking of that scene, you know, which you referenced where they're talking about this. Do you guys remember these, the social contract you would essentially sign in high school? I, I will not smoke. I will not drink. So Joe Bay, you're in the hall. Did you sign one of these waivers prior to your illustrious career? Yeah. So this, this hit very close to home for me because my dad was the athletic director at our high school the whole time I was there. We had what was called the blue book which was the, exactly the same thing, the rule, rules, that we, things we weren't allowed to do. And I had to sign. And, uh, you know, I was not much of a, a partier in high school, so I didn't think twice about signing it. But um, there, were some, there were some incidents that, uh, you know, my best friend lost his captainship because of Blue Book violations. Um, I happened to be with him when he did those violations. I didn't, I didn't get caught, so good for me. But, uh, yeah, we definitely signed it, and it was a big part of our uh, high school athletics. Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, Bob, your honorable mention scene. Honorable mention. School ends and these eighth graders leave middle school. And it goes on to my burning question. I, I, why are these seniors so angry? I, I've never been mad at another human being as much as these seniors are mad at these eighth graders. I don't know where that comes from, but it gets out and then they just go on a full on manhunt. I mean, they're speeding down roads. I mean, I can't. I mean, I think in 19, this was 1976 or 77. I think at some point this, like 1983, they run over a kid, right? They, at some point, 
somebody dies during this exercise and they don't do this anymore, but they're chasing them. Uh, the girls are putting, you know, pacifiers in the girl's mouth and it ends with Aflac coming up and the mom opens the door and says, oh, I was just escorting these fine young freshmen. There was some ruffians about and she pulls a shotgun out on them. I, I, uh, and then they peek out their heads and Aflac is, I saw that you two are effing dead. That's a, a great manhunt scene that I like. Yeah. And another great soundtrack. You get the schools out by Alice Cooper right there. It's it, it's a good one. My honorable mention, and I want to make sure I don't bump up against what what I know is going to be Joe Bay's favorite scene. But I'm just I'm just going to go right. Will you first meet uh, Wooderson? You know, you get the iconic "All right, all right, all right." I mean, it's just it's it, you talk about the feelings that you get. It's not often you get to see a guy uh, who later becomes a real big star. Just kind of that that first thing. It's like seeing Tiger Woods hit those balls. You know, as a, as a two year old on the on the talk show. Uh, way back when, but I'll lead that right into Joe Bay, your favorite scene of Days of Confused. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that, Mark. Uh, hands down, the entrance to the Emporium. Uh, it's, it is, it brings tears to my eyes. It brings a smile to my face. It is, it's one of my favorite scenes in movie history. He walks in, Hurricane is playing. It's like slightly slow mo. Uh, Pink's there by his side with, uh, um, you know, the with Mitch right behind him. Everybody's there. They're all having fun. There's so much going on. I mean, that bar to me looks like where I want to spend every second of my life. It looks like so much fun. Uh, it's it's just it's my it's my favorite scene. And I will, if you guys would indulge me for a second, I have just like a funny what I think is a funny story about this. So I became obsessed with this movie uh, my sophomore year in college is when we really would watch it almost every day. I go away. I go home for the summer. I come back to school. And I've got this in my mind that I'm entering back to college. You know, I'm a junior now. Everything cool is happening. I walk back to my fraternity house. It's this beautiful sunny day. Everybody's out on the front lawn. Hurricane is playing as I walk up. <laughs> and all I can think of is this couldn't be cooler. I am the coolest man alive. I'm Wilderson. I'm walking up. Hurricane's playing. I walk up to the fraternity house. I don't think one fucking, excuse me, I don't think one person noticed I was even there. It was like... <laughs> It couldn't have gone so high to so low so quickly, but uh, but it's still my favorite scene of, of any movie. I absolutely love it. It's uh, it's it's my number one for sure. Good, great uh, call, Bob. Have you ever been yeah. inside of an emporium? I mean, I know you've been inside well, of a bar at a pool hall, but what about an emporium? Well, what it reminded me of, and and the foosball skills of the guy that was playing is incredible. Have you ever played a guy that is good at foosball? It's amazing. Chris Yarbrough, shout out. It's shocking how good somebody can be at foosball. It reminded me of the rec center. When people ask me, hey, were you a good athlete in high school? I always tell people I'm a very good rec center athlete. I'm, I think I'm really good at ping pong. I can play foosball. I can play pool. So that's more of what it reminded me of. It didn't necessarily remind me of a, of a bar with Wooderson coming in there. But Hurricane, underrated Bob Dylan song. I love that. Very, song. very. Ah, um, your favorite scene. Yeah, yeah. So it starts, it's, it's ZZ Top playing Tush. They're smoking weed. They're they're in the car, and then they just start meleeing mailboxes and trash cans and bats. What more to come on mailbox home run derby here in a second? Um, and then they finally throw the bowling ball through the windshield. They're going up to steal beer. Uh, Mitch doesn't get carded and buys these beers. The most unbelievable scene of the movie. And then the guy comes in there with the gun, and he's basically. You know they're going to get shot for for putting a, a bowling ball through the car, but then when as they're leaving, the guy takes a shot at him, and our man Dawson is just laughing his butt off as he's getting shot at um, through through town. So it's it's a that was a I like that scene. It's because you know I think I'm coming around, Joe Bay. I'm liking this movie more that we're talking about <laughs> it, and then the sa the soundtrack, which brings me to my favorite scene. It, to me, it's the opening credits. And uh, Joe Bay, what did you call the beginning of Sweet Emotion? What, what was that term that you gave that? The, the, the instrument that makes that cranking sound is called a vibra slap. Vibra -slap. I need a vibra slap. It is, I do get, I, get, I got goosebumps when that starts. I love Sweet Emotion. I think it's an unbelievable song. And the beginning of it is great. They're pulling into high school. You meet everybody. You got, you know, like the stoners over here, the jocks, the cheerleaders, the whole, you kind of get the whole thing. It is a feeling of remembering what it was like to pull into high school. That's my favorite scene. I think it just starts off at a really high motion. So great job. I love, look, like I said, those scenes really brought back uh, some good stuff. So another thing that surprised me out of this movie is how, how quotable it was. I mean, it was just kind of like, 
ripping them off a minute. Obviously, Wooders got Wooderson's got some, but but Slater I think was kind of the unheralded hero. So we're going to go through the quote draft like we've done in the past. Each guy will get two picks. If we leave some obvious ones off the table, and Joe Bay, you might be able to pick those up. You you can bring them out now, or maybe in maybe an LOL. But again, uh, Joe Bay will give you that you won the coin toss. You want the first pick, or you want to defer? Uh, I'll take the first pick because it's one of my favorite quotes uh, in, in movie history, not to beat a dead horse that everything about this is my favorite, but uh, I, I, I just absolutely love, I, I mean, you could take everything McConaughey says and say, say it's the best quote, but the older you do get, the more rules they're going to try to get you to follow. You just got to keep living, man. L-I-V-I-N. It doesn't get any better than that. It's, uh, it's poignant. It's great advice for life. I love the fact that it was something that his dad said to him and his dad died, you know, while they while they were in the process of making the movie. So uh, it's just an absolute home run quote. Indeed. Bobby, first pick. Uh, well, I don't, is all right, all right, all right. It's just, it, it's not in the draft. I want to take it because it is the best quote, but I, I'd rather get to some others. But all right, all right, all right. If I get, if I don't take all right, all right, I might be kicked off the podcast, correct? How about we just call that an overarching one? I don't want you to waste a pick on. Yeah, on that. don't waste a pick. Don't waste Done. a pick. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, shockingly Wooderson and he's asking asking uh asking Mitch if he's got a joint and he says no he says be a lot cooler if you did <laughs> that to me is the better quote I laugh more I thought that was and he says that before all right all right all right I guess I was always under the impression because he's kind of marketed it and I get it that that was his first word spoken on film, but it's actually that interaction there. And I, I agree with you, Bob. I think he's just, is. he's got that look on his face and he's already, he has to already be stoned. Um, it's just awesome. Be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> it's a home run. Uh, look, we haven't gotten to Pink Floyd yet. Not, not, not the band, but the actual guy in the movie. He's got a good one that I really like. And he goes, all I'm saying is if I ever start referring to these as the best years of my life, remind me to kill myself. It's a, uh, it's a good one by Pink Floyd. Um, are we going snake or we, let's go back to Joe Bay. It's, it's your right. movie. What, go to Joe Bay. Don't take mine, Joe Bay. If you do, you're kicked off of the podcast forever. No, I won't. And, and, I, and see, I, I always go with the quotes is not necessarily the one that, that made me laugh the most, but uh, just, I think the one that I say the most, and this is one that I have said, uh, I would say 100% of the time that I see someone with the hood up on their car. Let me tell you what Melville Post is packing right here. We got four eleven Posi track outback, seven fifty double pumpers, Edelbrock intakes, board over thirty, eleven to one pop up pistons. We're talking some bus. <laughs> I, I love it. I, for whatever reason, I, I committed it to memory when I was in college, and I have not been able to forget it. And it just makes me laugh every time. Uh, you know, somebody pops the hood on their Honda Civic, and I, I tell them about <laughs> the engine. So that was off memory. That was not looking at notes. That was off memory. That was off. Memory. Oh, that's amazing. That's, that's going that's... on the TikTok video right there. Yeah. 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 And I love that. Like, I always wondered why he called it Melba toast. And as I was getting ready for this, I read about it and it was because his car soaks up the competition was, <laughs> was the reason he called it Melba toast, which I still don't really understand, but I thought that was kind of fun. No, uh, I'm going to, I think it's my, I think it's mine. I'm going to pass on Bruno's cause I'm going to, I'm going to save that for LOL. Um, I'm going back to Wooderson. You just got to give credit where credit's due. He says, good thing about, good thing about high school girls, the older I get, they stay the same age. Yeah. <laughs> that one has lived on. That one yes. has lived on very good. Um, probably I guess, doesn't age well, probably doesn't age well. I don't know if in the, today's society, it's a great one, but it's, it's still funny. Agreed. I got to give Slater a little run here. And just because like, to your point, stuff that you used to say when we were in high school, speaking of high school stuff, getting shotgun was like an all day, awesome. like it was just, you thought about it all day. It was a competition. It was some guys were just really good at it. Slater goes, I'm letting you have shotgun, but, but only cause I'm going inside. <laughs> Slater, <laughs> Slater just kept going. So really good quotes. I, I like it. Bob, you kind of talked about stuff holding up. Let's pivot into, you know, what holds up after, after all these years, you know, what do we still love? Um, I'll just give you a couple and then I'll let you guys kind of run it. The, the soundtrack, Joe Bay hit it at the top. So many of the scenes are kind of associated with the song, right? Like just in the, it, look, he spent a lot of money on it. I think it's the reason this thing lived on and had legs and became a cult classic. High school movies in general, I think always hold up because it brings you back to that time where we all sort of had 
a good time. You're innocent. You get it's the last kind of line of defense before you have any responsibilities. In like that first day of summer. Now I know for these guys, the the middle schoolers, this was a rough day. But Jeez. in general, that first day of summer uh, was really good. But Bob, what do you got up on? You know, things you love, things that still hold up. Things that yeah, sweet emotion, Aerosmith. It's it's incredible. Late '70s sports cars. I'm not a big car guy. I like cars, but those those cars are amazing. I think if I got to a point in my life where I had a ton of money and could have a third or fourth car, having a a really really modified, souped up, you know, Dodge Charger. I don't even know what they are, but they're they're pretty awesome. Um, parties hold up. Nerds being nervous going to parties. That always holds up. It's pretty funny. Here's what else holds up. I told this about Ferris Bueller. You know, we think kids nowadays, they're so out of, guess what? Kids in the seventies, they hated school. Kids hate school. That holds up. That's never going to, that's, I mean, Locke, my man, my man Locke already hates school and he's like six. Uh, that's <laughs> Joe Bay's, Joe Bay's youngest son. Um, liberal educators. I don't want to go through the quote <laughs> of, of, of those guys. Um, the, um, the names on the back of the, your little league Jersey, I've got a little thing here. Van Patton plumbing and McKnight auto were the two teams that were playing in the baseball game. I looked it up. There is a van Patton plumbing. How about this for a weird fact, van Patton plumbing. There's only one that I found. Guess where it's located? Elmira, New York birthplace of Mary Pizzotic. Wow. What a pull there. You want to pull? There was several McKnight autos, but it wasn't the same that we were that we were looking for. Initiations that holds up. You know, I think we were all in fraternities while you're going through initiation and pledge class, which basically these eighth graders were doing. That'll always be funny, and and, and it will hold up. People being great at foosball. That's that is a a a great great uh, trope there. And the last thing, hanging out at places that don't become crime scenes. It seems like if you're high school, you hang out at a place like that where that parties happen, somebody's getting shot nowadays. That's just me being old. So just a good old fashioned fight between Bruno, the fascist, and a and a nerd is good. Nobody dies, nobody gets arrested. It's just good, good, harmless fun. Uh and I'll bring up in the Hall of Fame plaque, the girl's name Joey. That holds up incredibly <laughs> well. Um so that's it. Joe Bay, what'd we miss? What what do you love after all these years? Yeah, I've got a couple. I mean one simple one, making out. Hirschfelder in the uh, in the in the in the dark room at the eighth grade party, just just sucking face. You gotta love that. Yeah. Um, uh, drinking blue at little league baseball games. Uh, back when Bobby and I used to coach together, it was you know just just hanging out, watching other kids play baseball, and having a couple pops is always a good time. I love the harmless hazing. You know, hazing has kind of gone gone the way of uh, some other things now, but uh, I I think it's it's hilarious. Here's a little bit of an off the wall. Uh, the theory that Gerald Ford had CTE from his uh, football career. They mentioned uh, his, his old football head injuries tanking the economony. Uh, of, of CTE there. Um, and then athletes getting special treatment. You know, I think uh, that's, that's one that, that, I, that I love. Hold that close to my heart. How could you not? You're in the Hall of Fame. Whether, 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 whether you got there on your own merits or, or not. We love that. <laughs> Bob, you always have questions. Bob's big question is coming up in a little while. But just from just in general, I know we've got some hazing questions here. I know you want to kind of dive into that. I'll let you cook for a minute. So the very first scene, there's something written on a shed. It says, eat more possum. <laughs> Joe Bay, you're laughing like you know what that means. What am I missing? I paused it. I made sure that that's what it said. What does eat more possum mean? I, I'm only laughing because my friends and I probably in college watched the movie a hundred times and we thought it said something else. We thought it said yeah. something a lot more racy. And yeah. like literally on the hundredth watch, as we were all, you know, six beers deep, somebody looks at it and goes, you know, I think that actually says eat more possum. And we were all just like, it was just, it blew our minds. We, we, we couldn't <laughs> figure it out. I have no idea why it says it. Were parties ever that big of a deal? Did you ever have a party in high school that it was like, it is on? Like, w w has that, does that ever, and that never happened for me. There was always some parties, but it was never like, hey, this is going to happen and it's going to be amazing. Any of you, Mark? I don't remember like, you know, hey, like Project X was going down and we, we had to get over there. Uh, nothing to that extent. It was just, 
just normal stuff. I don't, I don't remember like a just a, a rager. Jove? Bob, are you referring to Pick, Pickford's party that got canceled or the, the beer bust of the Moon Tower? No, the first one that got canceled. Oh. Uh, yeah, I, I know. I mean, I grew up in a very small town. So if if someone's parents were out of town, everybody was on high alert and we were not we were not doing that. I got I got questions. Part of a character in this movie is the cars, the music taken back to the 70s. But if you look at this in 1976, how does everyone have a phenomenal car? That's like all of us driving around with 2023, you know, Bugattis. I mean, what how does everyone afford an incredible car? Even the girls driving around with the Beetle, that had to have been a, a cool car at that point. It's in perfect shape. So I don't know how that happens. How I, does I have a, oh sorry. I, I have a little bit of an answer for that. Uh because I did some research on the cars. I'm also not a car guy, but I was just curious about those. They are all like uh, somewhat older models. So like uh, Wooderson's is a, I think he's driving a 70 Chevy Chevelle. So it's a six-year-old car. Uh, the, tr the truck that Benny's driving is like a 72 Chevy C10 or something like that. So maybe the fact that they're a little bit older cars is, uh, is you know, they're getting the, getting used cars. But I agree. I mean, I drove a, you know, a, a, a 94 GMC Jimmy with no brakes in high school or in, in yeah. college, not even in high school. I certainly didn't have a car in high school. Yeah, I was in high school and my my saw I got the 83 Honda Accord that was handed down from Mark to my sister to me. So that was 83, so it was an 11 what, an 11 12-year-old car. Greatest power steering of all time. You could just steer it with one finger. It would just nothing <laughs> happened when, when you do it. Mark, you had a point on the 83 Honda Accord? No, I was just raising my hand. That was that yeah. was that was my first car. Yeah. It was a good one. And the last the last question I've got is so Pink Floyd Rip, he's he'll always be Rip. Every movie we do, he's Rip. Um, how are we still letting kids this age make decisions that affect their whole life? Rip, you know, Pink Floyd's going to be in college, and, and within three years, he's got to decide what he wants to do with his life. And I don't think they're in any position to do that. So how are how have we not figured out this system? Like to your point, Mark, you got a daughter, and she's awesome, but I, they're in no shape to make these dis lifetime decisions at this age. I think we need to re think the education system in America put that on the list of higher higher arching themes that come out of the podcast I challenge capitalism now I'm challenging the education system huh. in America I'm right I'm writing it down big thoughts there big thoughts. um any questions from you Joe Bay Bob Bobble Bob will, he'll have a lot of questions still to come but do you have any from the movie yeah I had a, a, a couple uh one that always jumped out at me and I, I always hated this line is when Slater asks Pickford what time the party starts. And he says 930, as though it's like a seven-year-old birthday party that everybody's going to show up at the same time. And then there's a couple other continuation things where people in the timeline, I think people are showing up at the party before 930. So I'm, I, 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 that whole thing just, just threw me off. I didn't like that. Um, you know, I always thought, I, I thought it was a funny question of what position did all these guys play? You know, was Obviously, Pink was the quarterback, but where did everybody else play? Um, a lot that's of questions. A good, that's a great question. Dawson's a wide receiver. I don't. I think I equate him to the guy from from uh, Friday Night Lights. I mean, he seems like the same kind of guy. He's a wide receiver, correct? Uh, yeah. I was going to say a, a running back, maybe a fullback. What's Rip? Uh, Benny's got to be an offensive lineman. Yeah, he's on the line somewhere, or just yeah. your middle linebacker stud. You know, yeah. someone. Yeah, Mel and Benny anchor in the defense for sure, and probably playing somewhere on the offensive line. And what what about Wooderson? Was Wooderson a quarterback back in the day? Was he a receiver? We see him catch the keys on the last scene. He's got some pretty good moves. Maybe like yeah. a safety, like a defensive back or something like that. You need some of those Wiley guys doing that. What about does Ben Affleck play on the team on his second senior year? I mean, he's more mature. He's bigger. What do you think he's doing? Is he on the football team? Oh, I think he's got to be. Yeah, yeah. There's no rules in this world. He, he absolutely can play again. What position? Oh, he's a guard. He's a right guard. <laughs> yeah, black on the line. I love it. Uh, any more, Joe Bay? Are we good to... Uh, you know, I had written down, is Mitch Kramer or Wiley Wiggins, I think the actor's name is, is he the worst actor ever? Uh, yeah. Although I have to say, I've watched the movie now four times in the last seven days. 
I actually changed my opinion on this. And, and uh, I think there's a, a little touch of genius in, in some of his acting. So I, I would have to pull back on that. Joe Bay, I'm so glad you brought it up because in Mark's intro, I didn't have a chance to interject. He says, you know, this, the cast is unbelievable. Matthew McConaughey, Ben Affleck, Wiley Wiggins. I, I, mean, I don't know if those are the same type of actors, but I let it slide. I couldn't, I couldn't nitpick everything. Yeah. And there's, there's a, there's a story about him too, of, of how he was cast. He's coming out of a coffee shop and he's got long hair. So the casting director grabs him. And the second question he asks him is, do you know how to play baseball? And Wiley Wiggins says, yeah, yeah, of course. You know, I'm a 13 year old kid. He famously could not catch or throw a ball. And if you see, they put the stunt double in when he's pitching. Like the word is he was literally the worst baseball player in history and somehow snuck his way into this cast, which, you know, pissed me off, but that's all right. Good good job for Wiley. Uh, This category is going to be interesting today. You know, we call the best scene stealer of the movie. We call it the Matthew McConaughey Award. Now, what's weird is you might think it's from this movie. It's actually from Wolf of Wall Street, which is, you know, just unbelievable stuff that he does in that. I almost, it shocked me. Wooderson is in it way more than I thought. I thought going into it, look, McConaughey's going to win this thing. Uh, I'd like to make him ineligible. Bob, I know you don't always go with my rules. I'm going to make, you know, Matthew McConaughey ineligible for the best scene steal of the movie. So Bob will wait for your commentary on that. Joe Bay, who was the best scene stealer in this? Uh, We have not talked nearly enough about Don Dawson, uh, uh, played by Sasha Jensen, one of my favorite characters in in all of movies. I mean, the the guy is subtly just so fantastic, Um, but I think he's in it too much to be a scene stealer. So I'll I'll take him off the list. Um, God, I I had a couple. (laughs) All right. I'm going to go with uh, Mr. Payne. The, uh, oh, the, the, oh, I'm sorry, Bobby. Did I take it from you? I just, I just love the scene. You know, he's got the one line, Ben. It's like our sergeant told us back when, uh, before one trip into the jungle. Fifty, you going in. Twenty five, you come back. But just the, the the way that he says it, and then the reactions from the three kids. They roll their eyes, and then he says, "Men," and they just they jump back just perfectly when he says it. And the whole scene is great, and, it, and it's anchored by that hilarious teacher. So. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take Mr. Payne. Great. Great call there. Bobby looks like he stole maybe Mr. Yeah. Payne from you, but where are you going? He stole, I, I didn't have any backups, which was, which was poor planning by me. I thought I was going to pull rank and go first. So nobody stole it from me. Uh, the, the dad, this goes in my, in, in some of my questions, the dad of, of that, that breaks up the party, those big pointy collars who just cancels a vacation, uh, I, I, and every time somebody knocks on the door, he opens it up. I wonder, is that, is that what ages, you know, uh, is that what holds up the best or is that what holds up the worst? You know, a dad foiling the plan of the party. I just love how his wife just goes, all right, guess, the, you know, guess vacation's canceled. If I, if that happened, there's no way Mary's not going on that vacation. I might not be going on it, but she's going to the airport. There's no chance she's not going to the airport. So I'll say the dad. Good, good, good call. hundred uh, percent. Look, last week I went with someone who wasn't a human. I went with Jake, the pet crow. So I'm going to go non-human again. I'm going the Emporium. Joe Bay, you, you, you called it. That thing's, I, I will just watch that part of the movie and be good. I just, I think that scene there, it steals it. It's just the cool thing. And you got the music that you talked about. So I think we each had three uh, really good ones there. How about LOL? Now there's some good laugh out loud moments on that. Uh, Bob, we'll start with you. Probably a Slater. We've done a lot of Wooderson. I don't know if anything's left. What do you got on stuff that made you laugh out loud? The first one where Rip's, Rip Rip is in shop class and they pan in on the sign on the sign that says "Wear your wear your safety goggles" and he's got them on top of his head. I thought that was funny. That made me that made me laugh. Um, Don Dawson walking through the school and a, a, probably a freshman passes him and he just flexes on him and the guy and the guy just a, a just a bully when bullies were. I don't know if bullies were ever cool, but, you know, bullying was more well accepted uh, in there. Um, and the the fight scene, here's the thing about Dawson, too. It made me laugh out loud when I realized Dawson is Stifler. Stifler is Dawson. They're the same exact person, the same exact character. It was Stifler before Stifler was Stifler. And then uh, the fight scene between Bruno uh, and I forgot, you know, the one nerd character, not only the fight scene, not only the quote from Bruno that says, I came here to do two things, kick ass and drink beer. And it looks like we're out of beer. But as they're fighting, 
noting noting this is taking place in the 70s the nerd is like you effing fascist i basically laugh out loud that that was something you would say to somebody else to really really get them call him a fascist that's all i got can i jump in here because i feel like my my fellow days and confused fan fumbleia is gonna gonna kill me if i don't ask this who is bruno bruno is the guy that gets in a fight is it did i say it right is it wrong no, no, his name is Clint. Is it Clint Bruno? I thought I looked it up. I thought it. Oh, I thought maybe, maybe his last name is Bruno. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I only know this. Sorry, Clint. sorry, no, Clint. Clint, Clint. Yeah, Clint. That's okay. I just want to make sure we were on the same page. Keep, keep, keep him honest. He'll just keep going. Joe Bay, what made you laugh out loud? Um. Wow. So as I was rewatching, I realized I'm just not a big laugh out loud guy uh, <laughs> to a lot of movies. So, so I was just trying to pick out some that I thought were so funny. Uh, one that I that does truly make me laugh is the assistant coach um that when, he confronts, when he confronts the boys and uh it just it just like hits so close to home that i thought this guy is playing this assistant coach so well uh, you know don't get lazy on me don't get soft on me we're sitting by the pool all day chasing the muff around that just cracked me up and then he tells the joke about, about his grandmother being 6'5 240 and running the 4 five forty. Which, uh, which, and then of course, uh, Dawson refers back to it later in the movie, which I loved. Except now she's like eight three, four hundred pounds, and still drives that Mack truck. Though that 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 made me laugh out loud. Um, I, I agree with uh, Bob that the the Don Dawson, you know, faking the punch at the uh, the freshman and then sneaking through the door without touching it is just it's just subtle hysterical acting. Um, one that really that truly made me laugh out loud uh, the the fight scene. So when they're in the woods. And then Mike comes back out of the woods before the fight and he's getting all in, in the, in the face of his buddy, uh, Tony, he's like, it's that Clint, you know, in front of his friends messing with me and he's pushing him. Huh, huh. And then Tony's reaction, he just goes, oh, all right, Mike. Okay. And he's just like, he's, he's like so scared of him. <laughs> that, that always, he just plays the nerd so well. That, I, I love it. So, uh, those, those were a couple that made me laugh. Good job. Clint, yeah, Bruno. No. Clint Bruno is the name. Sorry, okay. Clint. Clint, I apologize. I apologize. No, I didn't mean to call you out on it. I just, uh, I wasn't sure who that was. It was a real time fact check. Uh, yeah. I, I enjoyed it. I'll, I'll give some Slater stuff. He he kind of stole the movie for me. Absolutely, George Tokedweed. Yeah, I thought that was a nice call out to the uh, former president. And then, did you ever look at the dollar bill, man? There's some spooky stuff going on, and it's green. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love, I really like Slater. Good job on that. Funny stuff. All right. Best parent, worst parent. I really enjoy this category. There's a lot of probably uh, a lot of worse people. Yeah. I want to, Bob, you want to start with best or worst? What do you think is more interesting? Yeah. The best is the mom pulling a shotgun. Like, Hey, this, that ain't happening. This may be widely accepted in Austin, Texas in 1976, but it ain't happening. Like it ain't, it ain't happening on my watch. Not up in here. Not up in here. No. Best parent. Call back to the hangover. Who was your best parent from the cast, Joe Bay? Uh, I went a little off course on this one. I think it's the liquor store guy who's giving the pregnant woman advice. Um, because <laughs> obviously he knows what a baby needs. He's you got to eat a green thing every day. Um, he's he's giving her advice about what's good for the baby as she's smoking a cigarette and buying a bottle of booze. I, I think I think that's the guy. And then he says, see you tomorrow night, because she's in there every night. I just you know, that guy's that guy knows parenting. I think uh, I think he's our best. Spoken like a man who has seen this movie a hundred times. Great, great reach there. My best, I, I just went with Pink Floyd. I thought he had a heart. He kind of took Mitch under his wing. Good guy. You know, ultimately seems like he's going to grow up to be pretty solid. Worst, man, where, where, do, we, where do we go here, Bobby? Um, well, I think it's Don Dawson. He looks like he's 28 in this. So therefore, he's probably really old when he has his first kid. So that's a strike against him. And he just doesn't seem that focused. I mean, it's always about where's the next good time. And that's great for a buddy, bad for a dad. You know, we got to get serious at some point. So, and he's probably constantly reliving the old days. Is this the best years of his life? So I think Don Dawson, although a great hang, terrible dad, terrible dad. Yeah. yeah. Well, well put Joe Bay. Who is, who is the worst parent? Yeah, and, and I would be concerned about Donnie too, because with his singular focus on getting laid, I, he's yeah. going to be a parent sooner yeah. rather than later. So, better get laid. <laughs> um, I said my worst was uh, was Mitch Kramer's mom. She just lets him off the hook way too easily when he stumbles in at dawn. He's eight. He's in eighth grade. The kid's eighth grade, years, and she just immediately says, 
And this is your one get out of jail free card. Like, come on, that can't be the one to get out of jail free card. Then she asks him if he's drunk and he just goes, and, and then she just leaves the room. Okay, that's it. Like, that, that's not parenting. She's got to be better than that. She, she knows better. She's the worst parent. I went with uh, Darla. We hadn't really gotten into Darla. She seemed pretty rough, right? I mean, what are oh. you looking at? Get that face off your wipe that face off your head. She seemed like she would be a rough, like to your point, Dawson, a great hang. Darla seemed like a, like a rough hang. Well, Bob, the moment has come. Bob's big question, a real big hit last week. Rapid fire. I love it. The fans love it. Lay it on us, buddy. Yep, we're going to go rapid fire. We start, I think it, the movie will dictate whether it's one where we need to go deep, like, uh, like, like the Top Gun, but I think the with a guest, the rapid fire is good. One mistake we made is you guys didn't know when to answer. So, so Joe Bay, you will go first, and this is rapid fire. So Joe Bay will go first. Mark will go second. Okay. If you're in Austin, Texas, in 1976, and you're a senior, you have a paddle. What is your paddle name, Jordan? Uh, mine has point point five one seven on it. Going back to my Hall of Fame career, my batting average, my senior year, and uh, and the real reason I'm in the Houstonic Hall of Fame. And I don't strike out. You don't strike. Fantastic answer. 0.571. Love it. Mark? Man, I can't top that. I'm just going with Paz's big stick. Let's see if I can fit that on the paddle. And there we go. Got it. Did you ever throw a banger of a party at your parents' house? Joe Bay. Uh, I I did. Uh, well, a banger probably consisted of four or five people, but we, we did have a pretty good time. My parents were out of town once, uh, but but absolutely never in high school. That was that was long after high school. Mark? In high school. The answer is no for me, Bob. You, Bob, you had a much better setup for a house perspective when you were in high school. When I was in high school, it wouldn't really have wouldn't really have worked. So no, did not throw a party. Who was the biggest ass kicker in your high school? There's always the one guy that if you saw him today, you would still take it and tread lightly around him because he could just bash your face in. Who was the guy? Uh, Rob Anderson. Was just absolutely terrifying. Used to beat up on my friend Coco when we were when we were freshmen. Uh, I wouldn't be scared of him now though because he is dead. So no. you know, no. rest in peace. Uh, but he was terrifying. Yes, Mark. Ooh, man, Tom Moss was a giant of a human. Played tackle at uh, one of the Michigan, one of the directional schools up there. Just a you wouldn't want to mess with old Tom. But was he a fight? He was a fighter. He was big, I, I, mean, you know, and a fighter. I don't, I don't know. It means, eh, that might be, I might be off on that. I just, you just wouldn't mess with the guy. It was just an gotcha. unspoken thing. Gotcha, Joby. I think I know the answer because I think I've seen you do it. Were you good at funneling beers? <laughs> I have you seen? No, I, I, I was not good at funneling beers. No, no, I definitely was not. Uh, I'm probably better now than I was when I actually drank beer, but, uh, but no, I was not good at funneling beers. Mark, funneling no, beers. No, can't, I can't really do it. Uh, I mean, I got, look, happy to drink them, happy to drink them all day long, just cannot funnel. Yeah, we, Mark, Mark Moore, shout out to Mark Moore, the greatest beer funneler of all time. Any type of liquid, he just, he would do the milk cartons at school. It would just be, it's, basically, it went down as fast as gravity worked. There was no effort. It was just like, boom, right down. Um, I mean, I'm embarrassed to say I've never done this, I know Joe Bay. Joe Bay, have you ever tapped a keg? Uh, I also am not very good at that. I have, and I've done it poorly, and it's embarrassing. But uh, I, I have done it, uh, and I prefer to, to pass that on to somebody else if they if, if we need to tap one. Mark, yeah, probably the same. I have done it. I can do it, but I'm not volunteering to do it. With <laughs> like, if nobody else can do it, I'll do it. But I'd, I'd rather pass that responsibility off. Joe Bay, if Nash comes home and you find out he got arrested for playing mailbox home run derby, what's the punishment? Oh, my God. My parents were famously so scared of mailbox baseball when we were growing up. Did they up. have the metal pole? We didn't even have a mailbox. We had a, a, we had a post office box at the post office, and I always asked my parents, why, why not? And my dad was like, mailbox baseball. <laughs> Yeah, it was crazy. And then, of course, we did it when we were in high school and college, and uh, I, I wish we hadn't because I hate it. Uh, this is a deeper – it's a deeper conversation because if it happened – if Sam comes home and he did that, I would think, oh, my gosh, next step, Shawshank Prison. But we all kind of did some dumb stuff. So, uh, yeah, Mark, Chelsea comes home. Mailbox home I mean, run derby. Yeah, thankfully, I've got 
girls. I can't envision them doing it. Probably like you, Bob. I would look like like an idiot. I, I participated in some in some dumb stuff. So look, you got to punish them to, to some degree. You're gonna go pay and fix all the all the mailboxes. But uh, thankfully, you got girls. I don't see it happening. I think we've already answered this. Jobe, not a big pot smoker in high school. I don't think any one of us were. No, I was not at all. Um, yeah, I, I, I indulged a few times here and there throughout my life, but not uh, not not really into it. Yeah, yeah not into the satsang arts. Uh, got some buddies yeah. who really have perfected it, but uh, just ha have never gone down that road. And I feel like that moment missed me. Two more. Jobe, did you ever come home drunk and your parents knew it in high school? Um, I never came home drunk. I was around my parents drunk a time or two, uh, at like events at my sister's college. And, and they sort of, my parents were very, my parents were strict, but, uh, they sort of let the rules go out the window if we were, uh, if we were visiting my sister in college. Yeah, I, I did not. I really didn't get into drinking a whole heck of a lot in high school. It kind of took me more in the college time frame and and dad was, uh, as you know, but he was pretty rough on me in particular. So I didn't really want to mess with the guy. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't get into drinking at all until college. Last one, Joe Bay, as quickly as you can, describe, describe your shotgun rules, i.e. Do you have to have eyes on it? Does everybody need to be outside? Do you have to be closest to it? What were your rules on calling shotgun? I think as soon as the, as soon as you see the car, you can call. Does Doesn't everybody have to see the car? No, nothing. As, as soon as you see it. So if you run out there and you're ahead of the group and you call it, you, it's, it's all yours. You have to be outside of the building, though, that you were in. You couldn't call it inside. Right. I, I will say being 6'5 supersedes everything else. I always should be in the front. I, yeah, I should not have been in the back seat. That's a good point. Mark, what are your shotgun rules? Yeah, so a couple of, look, a shout out to Jordy Factory. He was the master at this. But if you were going somewhere, the minute the car ignition went off was the call. <laughs> and he was he was legendary. He called it one time from inside of his house. I was Dave and I were pulling up to his house, figured I had this locked. Dave turns off the ignition. You just hear shotgun from the inside of Factor's house. He was he was unbelievable. So it was the, it was really the ignition going off that was kind of the trigger. And it was just in perpetuity, meaning as soon as the car went off, if you didn't drive in that car with that same group of people, he had it two days yeah, later. I, I no. Every time the car shut off, it was it was back. It was back open. But he, I rarely sat in the front. He was he was too good. Too good. Too good. Guys. <laughs> I just tallied the votes. Joe Bay with a very slim victory over Mark. Great job, buddy. Nice job. Nice job. Another fun award, the eBay Award. Not a lot of ton of stuff in this movie, but I think there's some pretty cool things if you were to see them on eBay that you might bid a significant amount of money to get it. Joe Bay, as one of your iconic movies, you see this on eBay. What is it that you've just got to have from the movie? Yeah, I think from my uh, very intense listening to previous podcasts, I think like cars are out, right? That's, that's cars are out. Yeah, good, good call. I, my bad. I should have made the cars ineligible, something other than that. Okay. Yeah. Cause to Bob's point, any of those cars would be, would be awesome. I think I would go uh, with Melvin Solpol, the, uh, his, his paddle. I love, I love his paddle. I mean, really any of the paddles, but, uh, but I, I like the Solpol the best. Good pick, Bob. I have an idea where you might be going on the same tenor there. Well, I was going to go Soul Pole because I didn't want to go Fuck You, but I guess I'll go Fuck You, uh, Ben Stiller's paddle. I mean, uh, uh, Ben Affleck's paddle. Yeah, a classic one. Also a name, uh, Fumble Eye will know that name uh, very well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if I could get my hands on some like Lee High School shirts, I, I think I'd probably want that from the movie, just as a just to harken back uh, to Yeah, that. like not... Lee, Lee High School, what was it called, Joe Bay, the subcommittee, <laughs> subcommittee meeting? Yeah. A joint, yeah, the joint subcommittee or the, those senior sweatshirts that the uh, that the ladies wore were pretty cool. Those yeah, we cool. see it in like seventy seven on the back. The class that, that that's a good that's a good one as well. We initially, I initially was going to skip over Halloween costume. I thought it'd be like, could you if you just dressed up like one of these guys, would you really know it at a Halloween? But Bob, I think you kind of came in with a late entrant here as a Halloween costume from the movie. Yeah, I think if you put the long hair on, you put that old school trucker style hat on and you and it just says Braves in red block letters and with um, a Van Patten plumbing. I think somebody's getting that. I don't know if everybody's getting it immediately. I think somebody I mean, Joe Bay is getting it immediately if we go to that same Halloween party. <laughs> Joe Bay, Joe Bay for sure is getting it, I would imagine. 
Yeah, maybe similar to the uh, the Top Gun outfit that would suggest you could have like a paddle attached to your to your butt as you as you walk around. Next level. Then then you're noticing it. That's a good that's a good pull it's on your bad. part. That's that's the winner. That's good. Yeah, just that's very very good. Very good. I I feel like I've seen people dressed up as Wooderson before. You can get the the shirt. I think it's a te- it's Ted Nugent on the th- on the shirt. I always thought it was Jimi Hendrix, but I heard it was it was Ted Nugent. But uh, which you know I probably shouldn't have mistaken those two. But um. You know, you get those tight pants, you get that shirt, maybe roll up a pack of smokes in your in, yes. your, uh, in your sleeve and you can pull off Wooderson. Oh, I'm sure I'm sure Wooderson has been tried a time or two. All right, time for the most emotional moment of the movie, better known as the Rudy Sack Award. Bob, I see you grinning ear to ear. What gave you the chills? Well, no, I didn't have one until, until damn it, I should have wrote it down. What's it called? Jobe, what is, what is, no, not the Emporium. What's the sound called? Oh. The vibe slap. That I didn't have one. I was like, Mark, let's just skip this category. There's no emotional part of this, but when that vibe slab comes, that produces some sort of emotion. That's that's my choice. I, I second that. We got two for sweet emotion. Joe Bay, you going any other direction? Yeah, I would go with that. I, I think one other one that I really just feel sheer joy from is the the school when the school bell rings and everybody runs out yeah. and uh, they're just scattering papers for no reason. It's just it just always fills me with, with joy. And like, you can just feel that feeling of the last day of school and, you know, the whole world is your oyster. You got the whole summer in front of you. So I, 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 I give that an honorable mention. At least. Good. Yeah. Now great memories of that last day hall of fame plaque, Bob, this is your specialty. Yep. Uh, I did mention the cast. Uh, none of them are going to be in the hall of fame plaque, you know, a great movie and had a lot of fun revisiting it, but look, a lot of guys went on to, you know, much, much bigger things. I will give it, Unless you guys um, discount it. Link later, the director. Look, I think he wins or Boyhood gets nominated later on. It's a kind of a production that he takes a kid through his life. But I think he's going in with Days and Confused. Does anybody disagree with that from a director mm-hmm. standpoint? Mm-hmm. Jason London, Pink Floyd, you know, he didn't really have a whole lot. You know, it's pretty much what he's known for. Uh, it's a great nickname. So I'd like to put Jason London in the Hall of Fame uh, for Days and Confused. Wiley Wiggins. The only reason I mentioned him at the front with the cast is kind of beer. bizarre to hear you. Does he just grow up to be Tim Lincecum? So he's not going in the Hall of Fame for Days and Confused, but I think maybe he's a young Tim Lincecum. So we're going to just put Wiley Wiggins in as a young Tim Lincecum, mm. not for Days and Confused in the Hall of Fame plaque. But Bob, this is your this is your oyster here. I do like it. I do like this. So, um, so the best first movie performance. So if there's a Hall of Fame plaque for the best first appearance in a movie, here are the nominees. Matthew McConaughey in Dazed and Confused. Brad Pitt in Thelma and Louise. Technically he was in some, like a real part. Um, Alan Rickman, Die Hard. That's his first movie. Eddie Murphy, 48 Hours. I didn't realize that was his first movie. And then the leader in the clubhouse, Ed Norton, Primal Fear. Mark, you're shaking your head. You got a, a, a thought on those? Ed Norton. I think Ed Norton knocked down. That's 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 Hall of Fame plaque for just coming out of the gate as an unknown. Like to your point, Brad Pitt had been around. Eddie Murphy was a known kind of guy. Great cat thing in a movie. W- w- look, I was really enthralled with what McConaughey did here. But Primal Fear, without Ed Norton, that movie doesn't, doesn't work. So I go Ed Norton. Joe Bay, were you paying attention enough to have an opinion? I was. I couldn't disagree more. Matthew McConaughey is so far ahead of all those others because he wasn't even supposed to be in the movie. And then when he was supposed to be in the movie, he was supposed to have like two or three lines. Um, like Pickford was supposed to be sort of like the, the main guy that did all these fun things. And and he was just so magnetic that he stole the movie. The The guy has created an entire career like on this character that he that he just sort of made happen. I, I don't I, I think he's uh, he's hands down the winner. I don't think you're being dramatic. I don't think you're being hyperbolic. I don't think you're doing it for the show. If you haven't seen Days and Confused in a while, a movie I admittedly don't love and wasn't that excited to rewatch, he's amazing. He's absolutely amazing in this movie. You just want him. He's. We've talked about this. That you know, an award for the Heath Ledger. I just want him on the screen more. Where is the sequel for Wooderson? Because I'm in, and he probably could make it right now. As as current age math kind of best stoner in a movie. Now, Mark and I talked about this before. I'm like, do we even want this as a Hall of Fame plaque? Because it's hands down Jeff Spicoli. 
It's not. He's the leader in the clubhouse for sure. He's the uh, he's minus two fifty, but the best stoner in a movie. So you got Slater, who's very very good. Days and confused. You got Jeff Spicoli, fast time at Richmond High. You got Carl Spackler in Caddyshack. You know Kentucky Bluegrass and California Sesame. Good news is you can play thirty six on it. It's just stoned him, but Jesus, Floyd. Uh, from True Romance, Brad Pitt, Floyd, and mm-hmm. True Romance, really good. Smokey from Fr- from Friday, technically a stoner, and then the dude from The Big Lebowski. That's way better than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be Spicoli and a Runaway, Joe Bay, best stoner in a movie of all time. Uh, I I don't think you can talk about stoners without talking about another classic movie, Half Baked. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean. Dave Chappelle and, and uh, all the guys in there play play great stoners. I mentioned earlier, uh, to, I, I think when I was talking to you before, Bob, that I'm not a huge fan of Slater in this movie. He just reminded me of so many people that I went to high school with that I, I just couldn't stand. It just annoyed the hell out of me, and, and I couldn't stand. So I, I, I never liked him. I think he does a good job, and I think you've got a good list there if you throw the half-baked guys on. I, I, I would stick with Spicoli. I think he's uh, – He's sort of the prototype that everybody's been based on. Yeah, same. I, I think you made me think, but I think everybody's kind of basing it off of Spicoli. I think he kind of set the bar. Hall of Fame plaque for biggest loser bully in a movie. So obviously we've got O'Bannon and Aflac, and he's really, really good. We got Johnny and the Karate Kid. We got Buddy Ravel and Three O'Clock High. <laughs> I love that movie. I love that. Joe, Joe Bay, you're looking at me like you've never seen. Have you ever seen Three O'Clock High? It's, it's it. check it out. Check it out. Uh, we got Biff in Back to the Future. We've got the older brother in Home Alone. I just hate that kid in that movie. I hate that kid in that movie. And then you got Rachel. Uh, you know, it's it's you know it's Super Bowl weekend, and Taylor Swift is the biggest story. So we got to throw a, a girl bully in there. Rachel McAdams or M- Rachel McGowan in Mean Girls is actually a pretty good bully in high school. Joe Bay. Best bully, loser bully. Yeah, that's a tough one. Uh, yeah, my, can you say the second one again? Oh, we got Johnny and the Karate Kid, Buddy Ravel in Three O'Clock High, and Biff. And in- yeah, so so Johnny was not a loser. Johnny was very cool and He's a bully. Uh, and uh, uh, eh, debate it. We, we'll debate that one on a, a future podcast. Uh, I would say Biff. I mean, Biff Biff was a loser and just a clown. Um, yeah, I mean, opinions up there though for sure. Yeah, it's yep. it's Biff. Johnny has rehabilitated his image on the, in Cobra Kai on Netflix, to where you just love him. So it's Biff. Yeah, I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it with this and Hall of Fame plaque for things people tell me I'm supposed to like, but I don't. Which <laughs> dazed and confused people tell me I'm supposed to like it. I like it more after this podcast. I'm not gonna lie, Joe Bay, you've turned me around. I might watch it again. Um, you've done a great job here. 70s music and Southern rock music. Joe Bay, we may end our friendship here. I don't like 70s music. I don't like Southern rock music. Everybody tells me I'm supposed to like Led Zeppelin and ZZ Top. I just don't. I don't like it. Weed, especially now, even more than in the 70s, everybody tells me I'm supposed to like weed. I don't. I don't, you know, that's not a a political statement. I just don't. Uh, The Godfather. Mark, I'm putting it out there. We've gotten some texts. We've gotten some comments of, hey, what's your number one movie? I bet you it's The Godfather. Everybody tells me I'm supposed to like The Godfather. Um, I don't. Um, movies made before 1965. I'm, I'm not going to say Citizen Kane is in my top 100. It's just not going to have. It's made before 1965. I'm not watching it. Old Westerns, kind of the same thing. I've tried to watch these old Westerns and don't love them. Um, uh, and that's – so that's – Hall of Fame plaque for things I'm told I'm supposed to like, but I don't. Not sure Days and Confused is it, but it's in the running. No comments needed there. No comments. Yeah, needed. no, that's going to create some buzz. Um, but 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 a lot of interesting takes there. I love it. It's almost kind of like Bob's beef. Uh, good good job. Well, let's let's the final award is the MVP of the movie. I think I know where Bob's going. I assume Wooderson. I'm going Wooderson McConaughey. Joe Bay, it's your movie. You're the star of the show. Who is the MVP of Days and Confused? Uh, it, it is Wooderson, but I could I could entertain a contrarian argument that it's Don Dawson. Um, <laughs> the the guy is just perfect. It just just perfect. Um, so much of what he does is great, but I, I can't hide my love for McConaughey. He's one of my favorite uh, humans. I think he's I think he's fantastic, and and he carried this thing for sure. 
Agree. Bob, I spoke for you, but I, do you have any final words on Waterson. McConaughey? No. Waterson, without a shadow of a doubt. The movie is the movie's not getting on this podcast without Matthew McConaughey. No chance. Agreed. You know who else it wasn't getting on with without was Joe Bay. But Joe, Joe Bay, Bay, an absolute home run job. I'll admit it. I was like, Bob, like they're telling us days and confuses. It's just, it's not in our list. After revisiting it, after hearing you talk, going through it, it's a quality movie. I, I do like it a lot more. The Wooderson McConaughey thing was really a shocker to me. How he just jumps off the screen. He's really, really good. Dawson, some great stuff. So Joe Bay, I hope you enjoyed it. It's been a blast having you on. It's been a blast revisiting Days of Confused. Great job by you. I, I loved it. And I hope you guys will uh, will go out for a round of golf. We'll have two hours between the end of the round of golf and uh, and dinner. We'll throw this movie on in the background. We'll we'll sit down and have a couple beers. And uh, you guys will see it's it's the perfect background movie to have on when you just, uh, just want to sit and enjoy yourself. I love it. I love it. I'll definitely take you up on that. Bob, our first fan right in. We've got others that we'll revisit and maybe every 10 or so pods and get them in there. Guys. Follow us on Spotify. Give us a rating. Give us a like. You can also follow us on Twitter at DePazCast. Bobby, next week, we've got one on our Hall of Fame. It's a poker movie. We're bringing in not one, but two hots of high society. Anything you want to say about Rounders coming up next week? Can't can't wait. It's, the guests, I think, are going to be perfect. You guys have already met Hawk, uh, Tony Hot on one of our NFL podcasts. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be very, very good, uh, a, a movie. I'm really, really excited. Mark, I don't know if you know this, Joe Bay, I don't know if you know this, but we're international. Um, we keep all the data on Spotify. We have listeners in Ireland and in Spain. This isn't a joke. This isn't one of our, our main buddies took a vacation to Ireland and downloaded it in, in Ireland. We've got <laughs> listeners in Ireland and Spain. So having an, having an absolute blast. Joe Bay, you were as advertised. It was a surprise to me. I don't know if it's a surprise to Mark how good you were, but had a great time, boys. Enjoyed right. it. Have a good one. Enjoy the Super Bowl. See you, boys.